This is the first of two presentations on overactive thyroid and specifically Graves' disease which is the commonest cause of overactive thyroid. The first presentation provides a basic overview of the thyroid gland, the symptoms of an overactive thyroid, the causes of an overactive thyroid and the tests your doctor may perform before starting treatment. The second presentation concentrates on treatment options. The thyroid gland sits at the front of the neck just below the Adam's apple. It's made up of two lobes on either side of the windpipe, also known as the trachea. The thyroid produces two main hormones, thyroxin, also known as T4, and triiodothyronine, or T3. T3 is the active thyroid hormone. T4 has to be converted to T3 before it becomes active. Thyroid hormone is active across many parts of the body, performing a number of roles. These include increasing metabolic rate, the speed at which we burn calories, increasing appetite, increasing gut motility, which means more bowel movements when levels are raised, and it also reduces cholesterol levels and increases the heart rate and the strength of the heartbeat. Overactive thyroid or thyrotoxicosis is a common condition which can be responsible for a wide range of symptoms across almost all systems in the body. If untreated it can have serious consequences but thankfully there are a number of very effective treatments available for this condition which are all discussed in the second presentation. Symptoms of thyrotoxicosis are summarised in this table and include those affecting the central nervous system such as fatigue, nervousness, anxiety, hyperactivity and poor concentration. It can also cause thinning of the hair and hair loss, soreness and grittiness in the eyes, neck swelling, weakness and tremor, heat intolerance and increased sweating, palpitations and shortness of breath, and irregular periods and reduced fertility in women as well as reduced libido or sex drive in men. Some of the consequences of an overactive thyroid gland include weight loss, often despite increased appetite and food intake, osteoporosis, which is thinning of the bones, which can increase the risk of breaking bones. Overactive thyroid can also increase the risk of an irregular heart rhythm and heart failure, which can cause breathlessness and leg swelling. There is an increased risk of blood clots forming in leg veins which can travel to the lung and cause severe breathing problems. Excess thyroid hormone also tends to weaken muscle strength. Mood changes are predominantly anxiety and can also result in increased irritability and hyperactivity. Effectively treating overactive thyroid reduces the risk of all these complications substantially. Overactive thyroid is most commonly caused by Graves' disease, an autoimmune condition where the body's immune system attacks your own thyroid gland. Rarer causes include small benign nodules in the thyroid gland which start to produce uncontrolled amounts of thyroid hormone. Thyroiditis means inflammation of the thyroid and can occur shortly after pregnancy when it is called postpartum thyroiditis. This is often followed by a spell of underactive thyroid and often a return thereafter to normal thyroid function. Some medications can also increase the risk of thyroid inflammation, but often the cause is never identified. Graves' disease is the commonest cause and over a lifetime affects around 1% of people. Around 80% of this risk is inherited or genetic, with the remaining 20% related to as yet unidentified factors in the environment. Half of people with Graves' disease will have a relative with the condition. It was first described by the Irish physician Robert Graves in the 19th century and later identified as an autoimmune condition where the body's immune system produces antibodies which stimulate the thyroid gland to make excessive amounts of thyroid hormone. When some people present with symptoms of an overactive thyroid, their doctor will typically perform a set of blood tests called thyroid function tests or TFTs. This measures the main thyroid hormone, sometimes T4, sometimes both T4 and T3. It also includes something called thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. When the thyroid is working normally, it is controlled by TSH produced by the pituitary gland which sits just under the brain. As the name suggests, it stimulates the thyroid to release thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone feeds back to the pituitary and if there is too much thyroid hormone, TSH levels fall, reducing thyroid stimulation and allowing thyroid levels to fall back to normal. The opposite is also true. If thyroid hormone levels fall, the pituitary senses this and makes more stimulating hormone, pushing thyroid hormone levels back up to normal. 
This loop normally works perfectly to keep the levels steady. In Graves' disease, the thyroid is no longer under control, and very high thyroid hormone levels mean TSH is shut down. Levels are undetectably low in the bloodstream. The pattern of high thyroid levels and undetectable TSH confirms the diagnosis of an overactive thyroid. We then measure the levels of TSH receptor antibody, or TRAB, which are almost always high in Graves' disease, although not in other forms of overactive thyroid. Rarely we will do a test called a scintigraphy scan, which provides a picture of the thyroid gland and a map of its activity. As you see from these examples, the whole gland is very active or dark in colour in Graves' disease, whereas the bottom two examples are patchy because only certain parts of the gland, the nodules, are making thyroid hormone. This test can help work out the cause of an overactive thyroid if it isn't clear from the blood tests which have been performed. The right side of this figure shows how, in Graves' disease, antibodies fool the thyroid cells into thinking that TSH is present, and this results in uncontrolled production of thyroid hormone. On the left is the normal state of affairs. As well as affecting the thyroid, Graves' disease can also affect the eyes. Eye disease occurs in around a third of people with Graves' disease. This is caused by swelling and inflammation behind the eyes and can cause symptoms such as dry eyes, grittiness, discomfort, but also in severe cases can affect the vision, including double vision and pain in the eyes. It can also result in a bulging appearance of the eyes. Thankfully, moderate or severe disease is limited to around 5% of cases. Eye disease is twice as common in smokers and eight times more common in heavy smokers. Stopping smoking is important and reduces this risk. There are several good reasons to stop smoking, but if you've just been diagnosed with Graves' disease, reducing the risk of developing eye disease and increasing the likelihood of treatment working are two excellent additional reasons to stop now. Please consider using one or more of the resources on this page to help you stop. We know that people who get help with stopping are much more likely to stop and remain ex-smokers. Additional sources of information relating to overactive thyroid can be found on the British Thyroid Foundation website.